started for Florida State here this afternoon. It'll be Osborne and many littles at the midcourt stride to tip it away, and it goes to the Seminoles. Raekwon Gray gives it up to Trent Forrest to get a start. Early look from the perimeter for Raekwon Gray. He's short, tap back out to Gray, spin move along the baseline, but it's knocked away by Manny Littles. I think Leonard Hamilton early on in this basketball game really wants to get his defense established. Again, this is a good contest leading into ACC play because with these three smaller guards of North Alabama, Florida State this year has really struggled with keeping uh, dribble penetration, keeping guards outside of the paint. And so this is going to be a really, really uh, important uh, kind of uh, day for the Knowles. Pass stolen away from Malik Osborne. Trent Forrest has made eight threes this year. That was the shot fake, but to the point I was making about Trent Forrest, those eight threes that he's made are a career high in any season for him. We've been talking about the need to just show that you can shoot it from there, regardless of whether or not it goes through, but he shows that shot fake, which made the defense sort of respect it, and then he dumped it down on the baseline. Yeah, I mean, again, the fact of him even shooting more threes the last year, see the shot fake, nobody would have bought that, but the fact that he's looking at the rim, it, again, at openly, that time just opened up an opportunity for him to penetrate and make a nice dump off to Malik Osborne. So the Osborne bucket makes it a 2-0 lead for Florida State. Some empty possessions for the Lions. One of the things this Florida State team has got to get back to is what they did so well the last couple years is that is getting that ball moving from side to side. A lot of times they get stuck in ruts because that ball sticks in their hands. And again, one of the things they try to do is be over 200 plus passes in basketball game. And some of these, so far this year, there's been games where they haven't got to that place. So I know today they really want to work on getting that ball moving from side to side and not letting it get stuck. Shove on the baseline called against Mervyn James the forward from the Virgin Islands. Forrest with the dribble penetration. Flips up the floater and connects. Again, Florida State's going to have an advantage tonight with these smaller guards. That's one of the things that they were emphasizing today is with these smaller guards, they're going to drive the ball in the paint and for their bigger guards, they're going to get over top and score. And you saw that right there from Trent Forrest. Andy Littles is an excellent rebounder, one of the best in the A-Sun. He was working down low. And now here is James driving on the baseline. Malik Osborne with the block, and MJ Walker comes back the other way. Seminoles looking to push in transition. Osborne lays it in. It's 6-0. Tend to shoot for the Lions. Blackman tied up with Raekwon Gray. Jump ball will remain with the Lions, but we'll go ahead and take a look at Florida State. First, the block for Osborne, and then everybody getting back in transition, and it pays off for Malik, who's now scored four early points. It did a great job, Malik Osborne. Again, we always used to say they reward the big fellow when he runs. He gets a block on one end, sprints the floor, and you gotta get him a touch, because he'll keep doing it for you. Another block for the Seminoles, and it caroms out of play to them. Last touch by Christian Agnew, who went up to lay it in. Devin Vassell said, no, sir. One of the things Leonard Hamilton has been really pushing with his basketball club is just day in, day out, just hard work and toughness with this group. I mean, again, when you lose five guys from last year who were – who we like to call street fight type guys, trying to replace that toughness um, is something that this team's been working on, but so far so, uh, so good in the beginning of this ball game. Off balance shot on the runner for Brim, but there to clean it up is Manny Littles and North Alabama is on the board. Back to that block for a second. Again, Vassell, he recorded four against South Florida. Three of those four came in the closing minutes where the Bulls, in their last five field goal attempts, four of them were blocked, three of those blocks were from Devin Vassell. 
I mean, I think it was the last seven minutes of that basketball game. Florida State outscores them 19 to, uh, 19 to 3, and the, the one bucket comes at the end of the basketball game. See, the thing about this Florida State team that may be different in the last few years is this team is kind of early Leonard Hamilton teams of that junkyard dog defense. This team's going to win on the defensive end of the floor. Compared to the last few years where this team scored in the 80s, this team may, team may be a 60-plus uh, point a night team, but it's going to get done on the defensive end of the floor, and it starts with guys like Devin Russell and as well as Trent Forrest. Well, there's Christian Agnew, the 42% shooter from the perimeter. Brim hits the deck, and here comes it. Mervin James back the other way. And Agnew cleans it up. North Alabama has taken the one-point lead. So in a hurry, the Lions have answered the Seminoles and take their first lead here this afternoon. This North Alabama team is a very good basketball team. Last year only won 10 basketball games, but so far has already got five wins so far this year. And again, they were they were up against Indiana. Then it was a seven-point game uh, deep into the second half against Indiana, the team that Florida State lost to. So this is a very, very good basketball team. Nice job there from Raekwon Gray on the baseline all over Manny Littles. And an offensive foul will be called against Mervyn James with the push off. Introducing Smart Dog. Also being a preseason first teamer in the A-Sun, so some momentum for North Alabama and some early momentum for the Lions here as well. Patrick Williams has checked in for the Seminoles, as has Balsa Kopravica. Yeah, this North Alabama team, again, Anthony Pujo does a really good job of mixing it up defensively. Again, they came out of the break in a 1-2-2, drop back into a 1-2-2 zone. They mix their defense up about 10% of the time. They'll switch and go zones and things like that. They'll play a 1-2-2, a 2-3. And again, when you have... When you're playing against bigger teams, you constantly got to keep them off balance. But one thing about this group, though, is that majority of the time they'll go man to man, and and again, and they are a tough basketball team. They have played in some big time games and have been in those games. C.J. Brim with the finger roll gets North Alabama back within a point. Desell with the pass out wide. Dribble drive for MJ Walker. Tried to dish it to Kopravica and it bounces out of play. James Anderson, the second, will send the ball in for the Lions in Florida State. Showing them a lot of pressure here. We're saving a little soft 2-2-1 this time out and we'll go back into a man-to-man -man defensively. Blackman with the kick. Agnew wide open. Off the mark. Devin Vassell. Wave off the basket. A bump on the floor. One of the things about this Florida State basketball team is just getting ready to, with this last non-conference game, getting ready for ACC play, is really a play of Pat Williams. I mean, Pat Williams has been a guy where you have seen glimpses of what everybody, you know, some people having as a top 20 draft pick. I mean, he just got, he's dripping with pro potential. Um, but now the key is can he just consistently, uh, you know, show it in and out, uh, day in, day out. And it's going to really be needed in the ACC with the level of talent that is, that they're going to face night in and night out. Anthony Polite and Raekwon Evans checking in for the Seminoles. Copra Vitsa and one. Let me tell you this. One thing that I've seen from the beginning of him coming on campus to halfway through this basketball season, Balsa has become a – he is slowly just growing up just game by game. And the thing that I love about him is I watch him in practice. He's such a coachable kid. And he's a kid that's just displaying more and more toughness. One of the things that when he came in, people questioned, you know, the toughness level. But what you're seeing day in, day out from this kid is his willingness to come in and just put in work. And it's the same kind of thing that happened with Fiondu Cabangeli. People question some of the toughness, but as you saw with Fiondu Cabangeli, I mean, by the time his sophomore year, that was the last thing you said about him was toughness. That was what he was known for, and I think it'll be the same thing for Balsa. Leonard Hamilton has said the same exact thing, has called him a sponge, and has been very pleased with how Koprovica has progressed early on in his Florida State career. Great ball pressure that time by Blight. Inside 10 seconds to shoot for the Lions. 
Cabrera is short, and here comes Raquan Evans back the other way. Sell with the feed to Coke Rabitza. Great pass, great finish. The lead back to six for Florida State, equaling their largest so far early on. Polite nearly come, came away with a strip. Vassell all over Blackman. And a 10th second violation will go against North Alabama. Again, great dribble penetration, great pass that time by Devin Vassell. One of the things this Florida State team works a lot on is that when they're running their pick and rolls, is making sure, and again, when you saw that, is when they're driving, they're always constantly getting guys rim running, and they're throwing with the length that they have, they're trying to throw it at the rim and get those lobs. Raekwon Evans on the drive, lays it in, and he's on the board. Raekwon Evans is a guy who Florida State's really had high hopes on. Started off early in the year with a hamstring injury, and it's kind of taking time to get back into it, but, I mean, he's a guy who they're looking for to give us really good, to give Florida State really good backup minutes. How about that acrobatic lay-in from Blackman? In traffic, here comes Evans back the other way, and Koprovica is fouled. We'll catch Manny Little with that foul call. A couple of free throws upcoming here for Koprovica. And here's the other thing, Adrian. The way Leonard Hamilton and his coaching style is predicated the thing that's so important about these bigs is that they're relied on for that initial push, right? They, they're, they're relied on to get across the floor quickly, which isn't necessarily easy for those big fellas. And then they could be featured at any point in time in any particular possession on the push, on the kick, on swings, on reversals. So Leonard Hamilton really wants these bigs to be active on, of course, both ends of the floor and perhaps more so on offense than maybe some of the other coaches in the country. And that's why his progression and his growth has been so big so far. It's really important because, again, um, you know, the game has gone to where, you know, all five guys in today's basketball game, you got to be able to shoot, pass, and dribble. But one of the things that, that goes back to what's been in the roots of Coach Leonard Hamilton has been that. The pass. Anthony Polite pass. is rewarded for yet another steal. That equals his total from last year. He lays it in in transition, and Florida State leads by 10. As we said in the opening, one thing about Anthony Polite is this, is that everything starts on the defensive end of the floor. There's been, especially that Purdue basketball game that they played where they, where his ball pressure won them that basketball game, and we just saw this on that time. Now. Christian Agnew fouled on the way in. The lead is 10 for the Seminoles. And Anthony... Yes, Leonard Hamilton has just pretty much come here at Florida State, and he's actually turned this into a basketball powerhouse. Um, again, when he took it over uh, from the, even the time when we were playing from a, a losing losing record for three or four years to now all of a sudden, now this, thing, this team's expected to be in the NCAA tournament every year. Jamari Blackman tried to knock the ball away from MJ Walker as the Seminoles were getting in transition. Instead, it's off of Blackman. It'll remain with the Seminoles in their half-court offense. 27 seconds left on the shot clock. Kopravica tried to dump it off to Patrick Williams, who lost the handle on the baseline. Back the other way come the Lions. Here's C.J. Brim out to Peyton Youngblood. Got a whole lot of nothing from Anthony Polite, and Youngblood loses it out of bounds. Again, you see that intensity we've been talking about from Anthony Polite, that junkyard dog defense, making it tough and forcing a turnover. That's been twice so far today that he's done that just by his ball pressure. Trent Forrest back in for Raquan Evans. Patrick Williams in traffic, in and out. Youngblood with the board. And he will turn it over to the Seminoles. Tony Pujol looking on. Still a 10-point deficit for the Lions as Wyatt Wilkes now checks in for Florida State. Wilkes on the drive from the wing. Koprovica couldn't handle the pass. Regains possession. 
and it will remain with the Seminoles. Blackman again deflecting it out of play in the uh, in the scrum over there. Tend to shoot for Florida State. Trent Forrest with it at midcourt. Copervitsa sets the screen. And Forrest picks up the basket and one. Again, one of the advantages that Florida State has is these big guards. And that was one of the emphasis with this emphasis yesterday in practice was the fact that for them to be able to get paint touches and then be able to get over top. And again, you saw Shot Talk running down. Trent Forrest was able to go spin and get over top and finish. So the three-point play for Forrest increases the lead to 13 for Florida State. One thing that's interesting about Florida State, they will play in that little 2-2-1. Two -two Sometimes they'll go man, but a lot of times it's just, it's just pressure, soft pressure that they put on people. They're not really trapping you out of it. But the thing is, because of their length, they cause so many turnovers sometimes without even trapping the basketball. And so that's what we always say on the defensive end of the floor. The key is just keeping somebody in front of you, putting enough pressure, and sometimes they'll give it up. And you, you, we've seen that today so far. We've seen three or four turnovers just off simple, just Florida State putting a little bit of all pressure and keeping the man in front. Inside 10 to shoot once again for the Lions. Anthony Polite on Brim. Brim with the kick to Blackman for Great three pass. from the wing. Great pass. Looks like a foul call here against Manny Littles. I think it was a delay game that time. Light on the drive, picks up another couple of points. And right there, that was a prime example of what we've been talking about with this Florida State team. That ball got from one side of the floor to the next, and by the time the ball hit his hand, also already came up to lift on that ball screen. And when Florida State's moving and cutting like that, they are a tough team to guard. Agnew had a face full of Wyatt Wilkes, and now here comes Trent Forrest. Side out pass back out to Wilkes. Tried to get it to Koprovica and it bounces out of play. Meet and greet with the uh, Golden Girls for Koprovica <laughs> who heads back over to the bench. Actually, I had one of my teammates one time dive into the cheerleaders uh, in the way game and ask for a phone number. So he's talking about shooting a shot. But, uh, Unintended? Remain <laughs> 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 here with the Lions as Agnew checks out. All over young blood. Now here's Blackman trying to drive on Wyatt Wills. Young blood. Nice hands corralling that ball. Inside five now to shoot. CJ Brim running out of time. Back out to young blood. Puts it up at the buzzer. Off the mark. Knocked around. Malik Osborne steps out of play to corral the rebound. That right there, that possession is a basketball coach will drive you mad. I mean, they just force they did an incredible job closing out, making it tough, but then don't get to the loose ball and now giving North Alabama another shot possession. Again, you work too hard to, to get stops and then not to get to a box out, not to get to a 50-50 ball. That makes it tough. And those are type of plays that make you lose games and can win your championships when you get to them. Put up that shot through contact and we'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Go against Trent Forrest. 
That time Kim Foreman digging in and got some ball, but also had, also had some hand in there. Blackman, an 80% free throw shooter, 32 of 40. The sophomore from Hoover, Alabama, connects on the first. Trayvon Gray checks in for Florida State. Check in for North Alabama. Blackman will head to the bench for a moment. North Alabama right now, they'll come in time to play 2-3, and right now you see them in this 2-3 zone. It's a basic 2-3 zone, nothing special. But again, can cause you some problems. Great move that time by Raekwon Gray. Along the baseline, Raekwon Gray lays it in. The lead back up to 12 for Florida State. Vassell picks the pocket of Youngblood. Forrest back to Vassell. In the blink of an eye, four quick points for the Seminoles to re-extend the lead to 14. Drive the kick out to Brim. Brim in and out on the three. Here's Malik Osborne, top of the key with the three. And like we said, Florida State, this basketball team, it goes from defense to offense. Timeout by the Lions. And you mentioned defense to offense. Vassell with the steal, Vassell. Most people think of Verizon as a reliable phone company. But to businesses, we're a reliable partner. We can have plenty of times you can thank the defense, which oftentimes turns into, so often, right, turns into offense for Florida State. You see where they rank in the ACC. First in steals with 9.7 per game. Third in the conference in blocks, 5.3. First in forced turnovers, and then first, of course, in the turnover margin. I mean, those numbers, as you mentioned, Adrian, going back to those days of the junkyard dog defense, that has been this team's calling card. And especially when you see the steals and the first turnover, the forced turnovers, those are marks where only two other teams in the conference have over nine steals per game, those being Duke and Boston College. Only two other teams in the conference have over 17 forced turnovers per game, also Duke and Boston College. So some rarefied air there for the Seminoles. It is, and you can see the reason why so far with the 17-point lead, Florida State has forced so far eight turnovers. They've got five steals, uh, two blocks, and again, this is the stuff that it's going to, I think, for this team this year, for them to be successful, this is what's going to have to be their calling card. And I think that, you know, so for some of these guys who've been around, the Trent Forrest or the Raekwon Grays, these guys are going to have to get used to this a little bit because of the fact that the last few years they've always been good defensively, but they've scored a lot more points. But this year the, the hallmark of this basketball club is defense. And good stuff there on the baseline from James Anderson, the second. The baseline, Jay, kind of quiets a Florida State run there. Malik Osborne. You saw previously with his second three of the game as the Knolls reverse the ball around the perimeter. Osborne will try again. Again, that time, what I would love to see Malik Osborne do that time is get that ball from one side of the floor to the other. Yard had one look you missed. Be able to get that ball swinging and go. That ball is moving. And when it's moving, this team's got some good, uh, they've got good looks at it. Irvin James, pull up three. Tend to shoot here for the Seminoles. Osborne working down low, trying to establish that post position and knocks down the jumper. And back 
with more of a small ball lineup here for Leonard Hamilton and the Seminoles. Raekwon Gray comes away with the steal. He scored in double figures in each of the last two games. Lions wanted a travel call. They don't get it. Vassell short on the three attempt. Again, right here on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, offensive end of the floor in Florida State. This is what gets this basketball club in trouble is the fact that, on, that they're beginning to go the last four or five possessions. Ball hasn't been moving. Again, even though Malik Osborne hit a tough turnaround jump shot, these have been five possessions since the timeout that have not been good offensive plays. And I know this is something that Leonard Hamilton has really been stressing with his basketball team of getting that ball moving. And as even we're seeing right now, ball staying stuck to one side of the floor, one-on-one -on -one going, and this is not the moniker of this basketball club. Ball will go back to the Seminoles as the pass flies out of play. Substitutions all the way around here for both of these teams. Multiple new jerseys on the floor for North Alabama and for the Seminoles. Both of these teams like to substitute a fair bit. Leonard Hamilton very candid saying, if I were to try to put my five starters up against the five starters that a Duke or a Carolina can bring in, it'd be hard to beat them. But what I can do is try to beat them six through 11. North Alabama, same mindset. Both teams at the last timeout had checked in nine to ten different players. Good look that time again. Great job that time by Florida State getting the ball, swung from one side to the next. Good ball screen. And again, Pat Williams, good mid range shot, rolls in and out. Again, those are the type of shots that you want to have. It's in the floor of the offense. And again, good. Kopravica with the shove, so he picks up a foul. The fourth for the Seminoles here in this first half. 4.20 left in the half here at the Tucker Center. Blackman got some rest, now he's working on Trent Forrest. Blackman on the drive, had it swatted away, and here comes Patrick Williams with the pass up to MJ Walker, knocked away by Agnew to remain with the Seminoles, who have a 13. And the one thing about this North Alabama team that Leonard Hamilton had concern with was the fact of how hard they cut, how, how they get the ball movement, and how they just come hard off ball screens. And in these last five possessions, they've had positive outcomes because they've done that. So if I'm him sitting in the timeout, I am communicating to them, let's keep doing what we've been doing as they can. And I would tell them, as you guys can see, when we play the way that we play and we run our stuff, we got a chance to be in basketball games. So I would just continue to press that to them. Nate Jack checking in. That is the 11th Seminole to see time here early on against North Alabama. Ball will remain with Florida State. MJ Walker just two threes away from hitting 100 in his Florida State career. Patrick Williams, the sensational freshman, puts up a three and connects. So that's the third three of the half for Florida State. Patrick Williams is Kawhi Leonard 2.0. I mean, he is a guy, I mean, again, side on side, sitting very efficient. And the more and more the, the year goes on, especially when you play big time games, you start to see the big time talent come out. You're going to see that with the ACC play with him. Inside 10, Blackman on the drive, Agnew, off the mark, it'll be a shot clock violation. Wyatt Wilkes will check in for MJ Walker. One thing's interesting right now is that as they sub Wyatt Wilkes in, what they're going to do, though, is move, if keep Pat Williams and keep him at the three and then move Wyatt Wilkes to the four. So this will be an interesting uh, little lineup that we have in right here. String of five points now for Patrick Williams, who knocks down the mid-range jumper. Sean, let me tell you this. Watching that, you can't teach that. 
We're not teaching that. <laughs> this is, I learned a long time ago, man. Uh, I'll never forget the first time I watched Michael Jordan play, and I was playing we were at, uh, at his camp, and, and I remember here watching him. I'm like, man, there's something we just cannot teach guys to do. He's got a natural ability, and that right there was just his ability to get to the paint, get over top of somebody, and that lets you know the pro talent that kid has. So a couple of field goals there for Williams. He's got five points on the night. Shooting 50% from the floor. Tends to play well here. First couple of games that he's played in the Tucker Center as a freshman, he shot combined 61% from the floor. So after all the road games, the tournament games, you name it, going down to the Gulf Coast Classic on the road to Indiana. Now getting their feet set back in the Tucker Center. Here he is playing pretty well again. And another turnover, the 13th by North Alabama, straight into the Florida State bench. And the one thing is that happened just a minute ago was with uh, Pat Williams is when he got subbed out, Leonard Hamilton really kind of got on him a little bit. And you see the freshman respond well when he came back in. Coach sat him down, said what he needed to say, and now the young man has uh, come back. And again, what you love to see that because what that speaks to is the kid's character. That he's a coachable kid. He doesn't go, he doesn't pout, he doesn't sulk. He gets back in, and now he's productive. And, then, and that's what you want to do. Get right there, he goes, he gets the steal. Let me tell you this, he has the ability to change basketball games just on sheer talent alone. Agnew tried to knock the ball away from Nate Jack. He lost it out of play, so it will remain with the Seminoles. But you're absolutely right, Adrian. Offensively and defensively, Patrick Williams has put on a show here in the last couple of minutes. Now seven points. He's responsible for the last three field goals for the Seminoles, all in the last couple of minutes. A scoreless streak now nearing three and a half minutes for North Alabama as those turnovers continue to pile up. Jack with the three ball attempt off the mark. And here come the Lions. Danny Littles working down low. And he sends it back out to Blackman. Step back jumper for Blackman off the mark. Bounces around. Coper beats and wrestles it down. As we approach the final minute here, the first half, the Seminoles now with a 20-point lead, 45-25. Forrest had it blocked, tried to put it back up, caught the underside of the, of the backboard, and Wyatt Wilkes off the mark on his jumper as that ball bounced out of play. Mervyn James lost the handle, so North Alabama, who tried to push the pace, turns it right back over to Florida State. One thing you see with this Florida State team, when they, you know, Trent Forrest almost turns it over there, and you've seen a few possessions when there's almost a turnover, and that next pass that comes after that, Florida State takes an illo bad shot. Manny Little's got a hand in there for a block. He wrestles it down. Now here come the Lions. Agnew working on Jack. Spin move. Had it blocked by Patrick Williams, but a foul will be called on. Actually, it looks like they're going to call Jack for the foul there. Just the sixth appearance of the season for Nate Jack, who comes off the bench and is one of a few of the prospects on this team, along with Wyatt Wilkes, who a lot of folks are excited to see him shoot the three ball, was the leading scorer, I believe, against Chicago State, made a handful of threes in that game. Yeah, he's a guy who's a specialist, again, uh, in, you know, kind of the essence of P.J. Savoy, who's a... Uh, for a few years here for the state made such a huge impact. And I think they're going to need a Nate Jack later as the year goes on to be able to make shots. Patrick Williams on the drive, too strong on the lay in attempt. Ball once again bounces around inside the final 30 seconds. Agnew trying to push up ahead, could not lay it in in transition. Here comes Raekwon Evans. Fast and frenetic has been this past minute or two. Agnew charged in to try to knock the ball away from Evans. He will be called for the foul. We'll put Evans to the line as the Seminoles are now in the bonus. That play right there is what would cause the coach to go mad. Is the fact that you know, you're driven past the timeline, you're right there, and again, he doesn't see you coming. All you have to do is just get a back tap, but he just runs, runs into him, and now all of a sudden you're going to go, and it could have been where you get a chance to get a steal, maybe get another shot to where now 
they're going to go to the line and you're going to put him in a place where they're going to be able to make two shots of course they can get two more points. So the lead back up to 20 now as Evans connects on the front end of the one and one. And he'll make them both for a 21-point lead. Bulls bringing the full court press. Here's Agnew working on Evans. Littles on the baseline, puts up the shot. Not much time left. Great Jack pass. at the buzzer. Oh. Can't connect. So the lead for Florida State here at the half is 20 for the Seminoles. So set to get it back underway, Raekwon Gray sends it into Trent Forrest. And we welcome you back to Tallahassee. Sean Davison alongside Adrian Crawford, Aria Masudi, the third member of our team. Great play. And Vassell throws down another one. Again, great, a great design play for uh, Florida State right out of the half. And again, that is one of the things you try to do, is get that ball going from side to side, getting a good offensive flow. And these are the type of things, and those little plays like that matter because, you know, you want to run those and we, you know, after timeout situations going into different halves. And so lets this team, it shows that this team ready, prepared, and paying attention during those, uh, during halftime. Agnew long on the three attempt. And then picks off that pass and will try to come back the other way. Ooh. Blocked by Trent Forrest. Vassell comes Ooh. crashing in. Brim tries to recover. MJ Walker steals it away. Now here's Malik Osborne who dunks it for Florida State. He's got 14. That is a new FSU high for Malik Osborne. Trent Forrest that time came down pretty hard on that uh, on this elbow. Hopefully it's uh, nothing serious. Gave the thumbs up back to the bench. They've got Raekwon Evans at the scorer's table. I think Trent Boris tried to wave him off. Instead, Leonard Hamilton said, ah, we're going to take a look at you. So Forrest checks out. Evans checks in to take over those point guard duties. Here's Blackman. In traffic, tried to lay it in. Manny Littles recovers it, and he lays one up in traffic and will earn a trip to the free throw line. One of the things Florida State's doing a great job of is keeping ball pressure. Again, when we talked about at the beginning, these three guards um, at, uh, at North Alabama have caused a lot of teams a lot of problems with the dribble penetration. But Florida State's done a good job of containing. But also, even when they do break down, just that second layer of defense has been incredible. Stepping up the lane that time you saw from Lee Gosborn. First free throw attempt there from Littles is off the mark. And he gets the second one to roll through. Evans on the drive. Lays it up and collects the end one. Great job that time by Raekwon Evans going through, driving through contact and getting that strong finish. This is a guy that, as we talked about earlier, high upside, a really good Juco prospect who transferred into the program from North Idaho College where Florida State also picked up Brian Angola. But a guy that has been dealing with a nagging hamstring injury, he will now check out and Trent Forrest will check back in. But back to Evans for just a moment. This is a guy that what he is going to be able to do for Florida State is because they try to run at such a frantic pace and try to get opposing defenses off balance, it exhausts your own players. And you need somebody in there to relieve Trent Forrest and give him some minutes on the bench to catch his breath and get himself ready to go again. And that's what they are going to trust Evans to do more and more as he continues to get healthy. Yeah. 
I think that with Raekwon Evans is is what you hope to do as well is be able to get him and Trent Forrest playing together at times where you can spell Trent Forrest, get him off the ball. Um, you know, instead of him being the primary ball hand, get him off the ball where he can be a little bit more effective offensively. And I think that as the as the years going as the years going on so far, I think Raekwon Evans is starting to get back to a flow. Again, this Christmas break is always a good time. Uh, for this team because, you know, there's no class that's going on. It's just all basketball. And, again, one of the things he struggled a little bit with was conditioning coming back. And I think that coming back off the break, he's really been making that an emphasis and, and really learning the playbook. And I think down the stretch, especially getting the ACC play, he is going to be needed for this Seminole basketball club uh, to, to push into postseason. Made his first three of the season in the Orange Bowl Classic down in Sunrise, Florida. Great pass. That's one thing that Raekwon Gray does a great job of. Again, when you've got a guy like him, 6'7", you know, 260, being able to push the ball, pass it, stuff like that, Draymond Green type, again, that helps his basketball club. Unable to connect on the jumper, so here are the Lions with 15 left. Mervyn James. Looked like he stepped out of play. Jay Walker working down low, off balance, couldn't get it to go. Malik Osborne wrestles down a rebound. He's the rebound leader for the Seminoles. Vassell in and out on the three ball attempt. He will collect that ball back off the steal. Now here's Osborne who had it blocked by, looked like Mervyn James. Great play. Crowd saw a lot of contact. They wanted a foul called. And that time a great play by Mervyn James again maybe a little bit of contact look a little bit of old school bad boy uh, bad boy Pistons uh, defense that time. <laughs> looks like Osborne also got called for a foul looks like he might have called him for tripping oh that's like a double whammy uh -huh. block, man get called for a foul One thing this Florida State basketball club has to do right now, again, with the comfortable lead, is just this keeping their foot on the gas, not just kind of getting to selfish basketball, but still getting the ball moving offensively, still working on some things, being strong defensively, not getting sloppy, because having that type of mental attention and, and, and being able to go through a basketball game really matters because when it does become close games, when it is a six-point basketball game and you're playing the likes of a Carolina or a Virginia, Again, it's all just about the mental part of basketball, and hopefully this team today can keep this kind of this mentality going for the rest of the game. MJ Walker called for the bump. Been a quiet day so far for MJ Walker. As Trent Forrest is called for the foul, Mervyn James tried to throw one down. Thing. One thing I love about Mervyn James, man, again, teams down, you know, a little bit, teams down over 20 points, but the guy's still being active on both ends of the floor. And see, I think this team, when they, they're going to shock a lot of people in the A-Sun. I mean, we saw, you know, a North Florida team came in here who was pretty good. I uh, played Florida State um, a little bit right before the break. Uh, this North Florida team's good. I mean, Liberty's in, that eight, Liberty's in the A-Sun this year. I think uh, as the last I've checked, Liberty's still undefeated beat Vanderbilt. I mean, they're a really, really talented basketball club. So the A-Sun is a very, very good basketball conference. This North Alabama team's going to cause some teams some problems this year. Mervyn James, you just saw attempt those free throws. Fifth best amongst all players in the A-Sun, 59% from the floor. Vassell with the pass out to Forrest. It is amazing when you watch this team play, when they get the ball from one side of the floor to the other, how effective the, the rate percentages go up of them scoring. 
the majority of that first half. To your point, Adrian, Florida State was shooting well into the 60s in terms of percent from the floor. That ball in and out. Rebound wrestled down by Agnew. In traffic, Osborne with another block. Here come the Seminoles pushing the pace. Forrest in trans three games since his return, however, 10.1 points per game, shooting 34% from the perimeter. He scored 10 or more in the last four games. And he's also shooting 90% from the free throw line, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. And another pretty darn good one is at the line right now in Trent Forrest. Yeah, the thing about MJ Walker is the fact that, you know, him coming into school was, you know, him coming as a McDonald's All-American and, and a lot of pressure that. And, and, and I think it's just taking him time to finally settle in because you come in with all the hype of your McDonald's All-American. Everybody thinks you should be one and done. And, and sometimes the game just comes a little bit slower for other guys, whether, again, you know, day in, day out, you got teams scheming for you. And it's taken him a few years to kind of get settled into. And I think he's kind of, you know, moving in the right direction of what everybody hoped he could what he could have been and what he's going to be. And hopefully he'll stay injury-free and can be able to continue this process of what he's been doing so far. Well, the lead is now up to 30 for the Seminoles. Alexa Matic has checked in for the first time for the Lions. Just 10 left on the shot clock. Now five, James on the drive. Spin move, puts it up, cannot connect. Littles with the rebound, he will finish. So the offensive rebound and put back for Manny Littles. Cuts the deficit back inside 30 for the moment. Vassell trying to create some space. Too strong on the mid-range jumper. Osborne nearly came away with the steal. Instead, it'll be MJ Walker who comes away with that steal. Forced on the baseline drive. Pass too hot through the hands of Raekwon Gray. And Agnew lays it in in transition. So a good little run here for North Alabama. Five guys set to check in at the scorer's table for Leonard Hamilton Seminoles. That ball was kicked, so we have an entire host of substitutions here. They're subbing in how I do in my, uh, they're subbing in how I do in 2K right there. You know, when, I come, when I come in my 2K game, hey, I, got, I go 10 deep. I go Leonard Hamilton in 2K, so anybody out there plays me in 2K, they know I'm the, I'm the man. It's hard to beat me. I just rotate. I press a lot, you know. A lot like Florida State does. So. Well, if this if this hit has anything to do with 2K, I'll be really impressed. Go go ahead, Aria. <laughs> well, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We couldn't hear Aria that time. We'll work on that and see if we can check in with him later. Anthony Polite. With the pass across to Patrick Williams, made a three earlier. He's made another one. Like I told you earlier, you can't teach that. <laughs> some of us have some of us have a little bit more talent than others. Again, Patrick Williams, uh, since that kind of you know Leonard Hamilton. Again, very rare that you see Coach Hamilton really get on. I mean, again, he's such a he's such a master of knowing the psyche of players. But um, again, he kind of got on him a little bit when he, when he brought him out. And ever since that time, he's come back in. And this kid is since he got back in, he's four for four. He scored ten four points. I mean, kid's doing well. Mervin James laid that ball in. You can credit Anthony Polite for the block, but then he got tied up with Raekwon Evans. Balsa Copravica, too strong, trying to put that ball in. See, even that right there is what Patrick Williams does well, is the fact that he's just so efficient. That pass right there, though a lot of people wouldn't see it as a great play, he just made that pass, and again, that's a great, and again, got a great look, but also just uh, missed that the little touch, a little touch hook. Well, hel hello, Alexa Matic with <laughs> that three-ball attempt, the kid who spent his summer on the U-20 Serbian team. Connects on the three for the Lions. And here he comes away with an athletic rebound. 
See, one of the things that you want to, I think I would like to see the Florida State team do a little bit more of is sometimes these guys are passing up some open shots to go make the more difficult shot. That time for Patrick Williams, he's already made, again, he just knocked down a three before. Ball gets moving. It's been a great, great rotation and rhythm to be able to, to knock that shot. Matic again. A couple of threes in a row, and the young man from Serbia oh. is heating up. He's trying to get a. Hey, he's trying to get get ready for uh, for conference play. He's trying to get some more minutes there in conference play. Tell you what, they're going to need him to do a lot of that whenever they play North Florida and that Driscoll squad. <laughs> but for now, the deficit is. Or two of four from three. He's come away with a few blocks as well. Offensively, defensively, having the kind of showing that surely he was looking for. Yes, Malik Osborne, a transfer from Rice University, sent out all last year. And one of the things that Malik Osborne has the ability to, we've seen on the offensive end tonight, but one of the things these coaches rave about is his ability to guard one through five. I mean, he is athletic and quick enough to where he can guard a point guard to where, as you can see today, he started at the five spot for Florida State. And again, in today's small ball basketball, guys like Malik Osborne are needed, and guys like him can stay on the floor because of what they can do on the defensive end of the floor. As this season goes on it's you know though today he's scoring 14 points he's leading him in scoring that's not going to be the theme from Lee Osborne it's going to be on the defensive end of the floor it's going to be rebound it's going to be the toughest he can provide for this team well we welcome you inside the Donald L. Tucker Center Sean Davison alongside Adrian Crawford the third member of our team is Sean, uh, is not me it's Ari Masudi my goodness dude, trying to give yourself I, I, did. I, I know that that was quite something wasn't it Cooper Vitsa. Let's see you, big fella. Also, that time pulled out the old uh, Kevin McHale jump stop to the middle jump hook. Some of the younger audience watching, they're like, who is this you speak of, Kevin McHale? Yeah, that younger audience saying, isn't he that guy on TNT? <laughs> <laughs> Go on YouTube. You can see a hey, one of the best post offensive guys that's ever played the game of basketball. Matter of fact, when I work with my son, I'm always, when I'm showing him the up and under move, I'm actually calling it to Kevin McHale. And my son's looking at me like, like, who is, like, he's thinking I'm talking, I might, I might as well be talking about George Washington to him. Oh, boy. Oh. It didn't count. Boy, wasn't that fun. <laughs> like I told you, you can't teach that. <laughs> Foul called on the floor well ahead of that, but boy, wasn't that fun to watch. The fact of the matter is that kid's 18 years old. Like he's 18 years old. Anthony Polite for three. Just off the mark. Cooper Vitsa crashed in to try to collect the offensive rebound and got tied up. What I think Leonard Hamilton's wanting to do right now with this team is really get this second unit. Give him a lot of minutes, give him a lot of burn right here. So you want to get game reps, get in shape, because, again, he's going to need some of these guys. As the, I mean, as it goes on, I mean, he's going to definitely need Patrick Williams. I mean, he's going to need Polite. Uh, he's definitely going to need, um, you know, Raekwon Evans. I mean, all these guys who are playing right now, he's definitely going to need them as the year goes on. And so. Hello. Let's see you, boss. A grown man status right there. Welcome to Double Figures, Balsa Kopravica. Four Seminoles have now scored 10 or more points here so far this afternoon. James Anderson, the second with a three. The lead 22 for the Seminoles. Now here's Anthony Polite. Yes, sir. Again, Wyatt Wilkes is an unsung hero in that play. At the beginning of that offensive possessions, he saw denial. He cut back door, which relieved pressure to get a reversal. Ball gets back into his hand, makes a great skip pass to the corner again. Coming out of high school, I mean, he was known for two things. His ability to shoot the basketball, but also that his ability to, to, uh, to pass the basketball. And you just saw it just there. Nice pass up ahead to Patrick Williams, who tried to lay that ball in on the reverse. He'll get fouled and earn a trip to the free throw line. Aria. First 
And Baltico Provita, a player that has really taken a Stan Jones. I love this. He's walking right over to him. Leonard Hamilton called Stan Jones a blessing, a guy who's been with him now over 20 years of his career, dating back to Oklahoma State and Miami before coming to FSU. But Balsa is starting to understand more and more what he needs to do offensively to put himself into good positions where he can utilize that athletic skill set that he has at 6'11". I mean, look at his body. Just shows a beautiful stroke from the free throw line, and he works every single day with Stan Jones on getting better. And Stan Jones, Adrian, as you know, has a pedigree of developing big men. He absolutely does. And again, Stan Jones, I've been around college basketball my entire life, and, and Stan Jones is one of the best basketball minds that I've ever been. I tell people he truly is a, a basketball savant. I mean, to sit there and talk to him, and um, and again, he is, like as Leonard Hamilton says, such a blessing to him. I think he's a, he's a huge part, um, along with the other sisters of Florida State success that they've had. And Balls is a very, you know, he's very fortunate to have somebody like Stan Jones going to be in his ear consistently. But as he's in his ear, if Balls can continue to keep getting coached his way, the sky's going to be the limit for this kid. Cooper Pizza working down low. Looks like perhaps too low as it'll go to North Alabama. <laughs> And here's the thing, too, and I want to add on to that point about Stan Jones and what he has meant to, uh, to Florida State and, and, and really to, to Leonard Hamilton beyond Florida State. It, 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 an interesting point that Leonard Hamilton's made that I talked to him about, and, and I have to say, Ari and I had the chance to really have a, a theoretical kind of philosophical chat with Leonard Hamilton yesterday after they finished their practice. And, and it was really cool to hear him talk about just Stan Jones has been one of those key pieces that has allowed him to establish tradition here at Florida State. You think about Oklahoma State and Miami and Florida State, everywhere Leonard Hamilton's gone, he's had to carve out that niche wherever he's been, and he's done so here winning over 60% of his games. And Ari, I know you were part of that conversation. You want to chime in here as well. But it was really cool to hear Leonard Hamilton speak so highly of Stan Jones and, of course, reflect on what he's done here. I think the one thing that he said that really resonated was that it allows for a development of a message to stay consistent for all those years. He said, you know, when you have a consistent message and I can really dish out a lot of my responsibilities to one guy, it, it allows us to really just tweak the message year by year, make sure that we're getting better every year as a program. And I think that's how longevity can work in college basketball, where in college football you see guys are being fired after every year because of certain results. And in basketball, you see guys who can go 15, 20 years. And for Leonard Hamilton, it's been really fruitful to watch his program turn into a second weekend NCAA team. Yeah. And I think the thing with, with Stan Jones is is the fact that, and I would say this, we speak, we speak to Leonard Hamilton, and I think his, his ability as a coach and also as a leader is the fact that the security, a lot of coaches, you know, being around college coaching more likely, a lot of coaches who aren't secure to be able to delegate his staff to be able to do things, to give him real authority, real power. And that's one thing Leonard Hamilton does. Leonard Hamilton really delegates, whether if it is uh, from, you know, from Stan Jones to CY to his new assistant, Steve Smith, giving these guys real responsibility. Because also the thing about Leonard Hamilton, he wants to develop as well. These guys who have these abilities to be head coaches. We saw Dennis Gates off his staff now uh, taking over Cleveland State program, um, Andy Enfield. These guys, he gives them real authority because of real ability because once he knows they want to be a, a head coaches one day, and so he wants to give them that opportunity as well. But having a mainstay like Stan Jones has been amazing. Well, Leonard Hamilton and his Seminoles will take... Introduce. ...can do different things. We saw the small ball lineup to start here today, and I know, Aria, you wanted to talk a little bit more about that with us and what that does here for, for Florida State. Yeah, and I think a question was presented to me earlier this week that I thought was really interesting. It was that, you know, Florida State's always love to have a seven-footer in their lineup if they can, but this year might be an exception. When I look at Ken Palm's metric ratings right now, the two most used lineups for FSU include Forrest Walker, Vassell, Williams, and then either Raekwon Gray or Malik Osborne. And for me, when you go small ball, FSU's been able to, to press a little bit higher up the floor, get into transition, and really start to spread the floor with pick and rolls and pick and pops, which have allowed FSU to shoot the ball at a higher percentage. Osborne and Gray are a little bit different in that Gray is 260 pounds at 6'8", so you can put
put him on some bigger guys down low. But Adrian, Malik Osborne, as you've seen today, has shot the three ball pretty well. In your opinion, what do you think FSU's best starting five is? I think FSU's best starting five, again, I would say this, the five that I think that's going to be at the end of the year that's really going to help me is I think when you go with the guys right now, you go know, Trent Forrest, Devin Vassell, I think Raekwon Gray, and I actually think it would be Patrick Williams will be the best five on the floor as the year goes on. So again, I think as Patrick Williams continues to get better, he's a guy who can play a four spot, but he's the type of kid with the type of talent that you're going to need to win big games in the tournament. Um, and, I, and I think that that's what, that's what really is going to come down to down the stretch. But again, this is different. Leonard Hamilton's always had very big basketball teams where, you know, he's had the seven-footers and the 6 11 four men. But again, as the games evolve, and again, this is credit to Coach Hamilton and the staff, they've evolved with the game of basketball. But also, as we said earlier, keeping the same messaging of that junkyard dog defense. Uh, again, one of the things that Florida State's known for across the country is how they guard defensively on the offensive end. I mean, I'm sorry, on the half-court set where they front the post, they still do that. And, and, and again, they're still going to need their seven footers. They're going to need Don. They're going to need Balsa. But I think those five guys will be the best down the stretch. And I think, interestingly, too, Adrian, tell me if you disagree. For Florida State, if their half court offense stalls a little bit this year, as we've seen it do, the best offense might be forcing those turnovers in the full court press and traps and trying to get quick twos that way. And I think that lineup of, of the small ball will allow them to do that a little bit better. Yes, I, I fully agree with you on that. And, and again, as, these, as the team continues to go down the stretch, what you're going to need is because more than anything else, I think with the small ball lineup, as you were saying, is the fact of being able to play five guys who can switch all screens. When you have the ability to switch all ball screens and still be very effective defensively, that makes you a nightmare to play against. And that's what these, that's when you go with this group and you got guys that if you can guard the post and you can switch one through five, I mean, you're a really good basketball club. MJ Walker is a big piece of that really good basketball club. Now that he's back in healthy, he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Maddich fouled him as he tried to lay that ball in. The lead at 20 for the Seminoles. But here's the thing, too, and I, and I, wanted, I want to take a look at, at some of the big picture stuff as well because I feel like if Florida State, and it goes to the point that I was mentioning about building tradition, if you assign some of these numbers to Duke or Carolina, I think you would frame it differently, but in their last 58 games, FSU's 55-3 and three at home. Wow. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. This would be, unless there is an upset of a cataclysmic proportions here with a 22-point lead with five and a half left, this would be their 38th straight non-conference win here at home. That goes back to 2014 when they lost to Nebraska in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. I mean... If there was any other team like a Duke or a Carolina that was putting up these kinds of numbers, I think we'd look at it and our eyes would pop a little bit more. And I, I'm not sure nationally these points are made enough about what is happening here at the Tucker Center. Well, I think part of it is that, you know, sometimes there's a narrative that's, you know, that a narrative that goes for a long time. That's written. And one of the narratives that's been here, that's been around, is because it is the strength of Leonard Hamilton, is his ability to recruit his staff's ability to recruit. But one thing that that the narrative does need to change is these guys' ability to coach basketball. They are some of the finest, one of the finest staffs in all of America when it comes to just in-game uh, preparation, also development. I mean, to look back at this team, if you think about it, a Fiona Kamigeli, who had very few schools looking at him to then be a first-round pick. A Terrence Mann, who's a kid who struggled to play in middle school and then developed as a four-star kid who played all four years, to now Terrence Mann's getting significant minutes with the L.A. Clippers, too. Um, again, you could go on and on to, you know, you see the trend and, and you're going to see for some of these other guys is that this group has developed, and it's been an amazing thing, and I, and I agree with you. This Leonard Hamilton staff needs to give a lot more credit for what they've produced here in Tallahassee. They have, I mean, again, no shot at football, but with football being down, this has truly become, it's becoming a basketball school with the level of production that's happening here um, for, for Florida State with Leonard Hamilton. And it's not just the men's team either. What Sue Semrau is yes. doing with yes. the women's basketball team 
my goodness, they're still undefeated, ranked inside the top 10. And when you look at some of the games that they've got coming up, I know conference play is a different animal, but they are establishing themselves as one of the truly elite programs here in the years to come. And, and, and again, and that's a, but I would say this too, that's a credit to I think some of the, throughout the years, some of the athletic directors that's been here, um, that they've given some of these coaches a chance. One of the things I think that we're missing in today's world is giving coaches opportunities and chances. I mean, you think about it, Leonard Hamilton went through a four, he had a, a four-year drought um, where they went to the NIT, and then if everyone thought that Stan Wilcox was crazy to give him a three-year extension of four NIT appearances, and since that moment, they have made this huge run. Sometimes you have to, if you believe in your coach and what they're doing, you got to stay the course, and that's what's happening. I mean, I remember when Coach Sue took over the program with two wins, and watching her over a 20-plus year career turn Florida State women's basketball into a national powerhouse, and we saw that with Coach Bowden, we saw that with Coach Martin, and what I hope to do is Florida State continues to build now, even on the football side with Coach Morville, that they will give coaches opportunity to continue to build legacies. That's one of the beauty of Florida State Athletics is having these long tenured coaches that have made real impact. I want to throw one last stat out there just for folks at home to ponder. Florida State has now won 25 of the last 30 games. It will likely here go 26 of the last 31. 15 of those have come in the Tucker Center. That's an 833 winning percentage just looking at the last 30 games. I mean, they win frequently. And it's been something that Leonard Hamilton has done relatively quietly, but with the results they continue to garner, you wonder how quiet it is now for the Lions against the Seminoles, who, aside from an early lead change where a 7-0 run from North Alabama gave them a 7-6 lead, it has been all Florida State since. They've been able to stretch it out and then maintain that here in the second half. Anthony Polite story that I'm not sure has been told yet has switched his number to number two because he is the second polite to play here at Florida State and that legacy means a lot to him. He spent a lot of time working on his defense and rebounding so that he could be more of that cog in that FSU basketball wheel if you will and it's paid off dividends and watching the confidence in him grow has been a lot of fun here this year. Yeah. Again, comes from incredible Batman. Legacy kid, comes from great basketball pedigree. His father, uh, Michael Polite, was a, a, was a Florida State great, again, uh, great scorer, great defender, kind of, I mean, kind of the same lines of his, uh, same lines as his son. And so, again, you know, Anthony had the privilege of growing up, I mean, a lot of his life in Europe. I uh, spent a lot of time in Switzerland. Uh, again, his father playing uh, basketball for a very long time. And, again, you know, the genetics are passing on, and, and, and it's, he's really been developing. It's a, it's a privilege, and it's an honor to actually watch the kid play. Just I love watching the kid like him play basketball because he just does it the right way. Just watch him day in, day out. Just come in, put his hard hat on, and get ready to work. That's what you like to see. He scored in double figures in two of the last three games. If he makes this free throw, he will be at nine in this one. He shot 40% from three in the last couple of games as well. So offensively, defensively, it's all starting to come together for Anthony Polite, who also has been dealing with injury issues throughout the first couple of years. He's here in Tallahassee, just a redshirt sophomore, and starting to realize that potential. Anderson with the mid-range jumper. It's been a promising last few minutes for North Alabama, something they can hang on to as they get set to start a sun play. Well, Florida State has cracked that 80 point mark. As that ball caroms out of play. We're afraid to get a green team side of anything. Perhaps. Nate Jack checking back in for the second time so far today. Three more, James Anderson has had the hot hand of late. Five of seven from the floor, 13 points for Anderson. Heck of a day for him. He knocks that ball away from Patrick Williams who reestablishes possession. Now here's Nate Jack for three from the wing. That was a deep one and Jack connects. One thing they Jack can do, why they brought him here is to be able to shoot the basketball. Came into today, limited sample size, but shooting 42% from three. 
He'll, imp he'll improve on that average with that three ball right there. And I think one thing with Nate Jack will continue to get more minutes if he can just continue to prove, improve on the defensive end of the bottom floor. And you talk to the players and the coaching staff, and, it, and especially so after Wyatt Wilkes went off and had his big night a few weeks ago, they said, you know, aside from Nate Jack, those have been the two guys that have really been filling it up in practice, and the key has just been getting them going in games. Well, Wyatt Wilkes has established himself more and more often, and now here's Nate Jack showing off his stroke more and more often as well. Lead cut to 15, Polite. Breaks into the double-digit column. One thing I love about Anthony Polite off that ball screen, and one of the, you know, what I was hearing yesterday from Coach Stan Jones is just with those guys off those ball screens, you, you got to really get your guy to hit that ball screen. What they call melt into that ball screen. And what Anthony Polite does is he really gets that guy to come off the ball screen, but then he's downhill. A lot of times guys come off ball screens, they like to drag it out and go east to west, but off the ball screen, you got to get downhill north to south. Well, you wondered if we would see a green team siding, and they are set to check in at the scorer's table. I'm definitely going with my man Justin Lundgren going to get one. He's definitely going to block it. And so some wholesale subs for the Seminoles. Lindner, Light, Prieto, Miles, and Cleveland Yates all checking in. And they work just as hard as the rest of these guys. They contribute equally in practices. And if you watch some of them, the way they can fill it up, they get in the handful defensively as well. And that's what's interesting with this with us green team. These are some of these guys who absolutely could go play, um, you know, being here, developing at Florida State. Some of these guys who, who may end up being fifth-year guys could actually go play at a lower level of Division I. Like actually, I mean, I truly believe like a Justin Linder can go play in an A-Sun and actually be a productive backup front guard in that league. Well, here he is with it, putting on the spin move. Now here's Will Miles giving it up to Cleveland Yates. Harrison Prieto. Back out to Linder. Now 10 left on the shot clock. He lays it up. Well, and tell you. Gets the roll. Justin Linder, welcome to the scoring column. Let me tell you this. Justin Linder, that is Coach C Wise, the secret development man right there. I've watched those guys in the gym throughout the summer. C Y working with from guys from Tanner's man, but he's always in there with Justin Linder. And Justin Linder that time with the nice high uh, butter roll that time. How about Harrison Prieto getting those arms up, coming away? with yet another North Alabama turnover. Knowles can hold and close this one out. Prieto trying to set the screen for Lindner. Inside five, here's Light. He'll put it up at the buzzer. Not quite. It'll be a 17-point win for number 17 here at the Tucker Center. Non-conference play in the regular season has come to a close. And Adrian, if I asked you before the season began with six new names seeing considerable time for the Seminoles, losing guys like Terrence Mann and Fiondu Cavangelo,